Good morning to you. Welcome to Up to the Minute. Hey, it's finally Friday. That's right. Hashtag it. Film Friday as well, because we got some special guests joining you this morning. I'm Todd Duplantis. Good to have you with us. A bit chilly outside. I don't know if you've stepped outside, but it's cold as heck out there. Uh, Dr. Tony Rayo. Tony, have you been out this morning? I have not been out, but I can see how cold it is. And I can, I know, what is it, 37 degrees? That's what my watch says. Yep, yeah, you got to believe the watch. Yeah, you're inside, <laughs> but it says 37 degrees. That makes sense, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 37 degrees out there. It's cold. It's going to get to the 20s tonight. That's just cold for us in Houston. I'm sorry, but we're in Houston. We're not used to this. So uh, if there's any sign of moisture on the roadways, don't go anywhere. Mm -mm. Stay home. Don't drive. Right now, we look okay, so hopefully it'll stay that way, but just, just our public service announcement for this morning. Another PSA for this morning is uh, the fact that, you know, we are live on Facebook and YouTube every morning at 10 a.m. with this show. You can catch us live, but you can also catch the rebroadcast on HCC TV. We're on at noon, at 5, and then at 10 p.m., so you can watch the show. If you don't catch it live, you can always, though, Tony, catch us in social media. Yes, just go to Houston Community College District, not just the HCC, because there's a billion of those. Maybe not a billion, but there's a lot. Uh, <laughs> Houston, there's a good number of them out there. Yeah. yeah really. yep. uh, Houston Community College District and go to Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter and Instagram and you can find us. Tony, I know you do a theater stage makeup class, right? Yes. Okay. Do you ever work with the filmmaking folks when you do that class? Like, do they ever put horror movies together and you bring in your crew and you play Tom Savino? Well, we, I haven't done it personally with them, but we're, we're ready and able, but we've done it with the theater uh, stage makeup. We've, we've yeah. helped out with some of those things, but yeah, we're, we're there and ready. We, we know the difference between film and stage. There is a difference with makeup. <laughs> oh, there is. Okay. All right. Do you have to be more bloody on stage or in film? What's the, what's the rule of thumb there? If you're creating like a slasher movie. Well, the main thing is that on stage, you've got to exaggerate it more than you do on film because on okay. film you have to, you know, it has to look real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We'll talk more about that later on in the show. Tony, uh, you're going to be interviewing this next guest. We've got uh, our professor of HCC audio recording, filmmaking, and music business. She's also on the Swamp board. She's a new board member. Julie Newland joining us once again on the show. Always good to see you, Julie. Always exciting to be here, I have to tell you. It's um, it's one of those things that's just a highlight of my week when it can happen, especially <laughs> when I get to be on with really fun people. And I have to admit, um, you know, Dr. Rayo, it's very, very true. Uh, if we don't have good makeup, when we decide that we want to kill someone like on Dexter and things need to splatter all against the walls. I mean, it's just got to be right. You know what it's I'm gotta saying? Be right. <laughs> yes. It's got to be right. You know, and, and, and yeah. both of you are here to help us with that. So weave into your conversation. How do you create fake blood when you get to it? Would you do that, please? Sure. So be working on that. Yeah. Because I've heard all wow. types of theories. All right. <laughs> There all are, are all kinds of theories, aren't there, Doc? I mean, like, you yes. know, do you guys do you guys go with the sugar route? Do you use sort of the I've heard the chocolate syrup, syrup with red dye. Everybody has different philosophies about this. There's things. a different yeah. philosophy, or you can just buy it. You know, <laughs> that's true. You can buy it by the gallon. They put it in pickle buckets, five gallon wow. pickle buckets. I mean, you can paint your house, or that you can, you know, splatter a person. That is scary as can be. All right, things you learn on up to the minute at ten a.m. in the morning. Hope you're not having your breakfast. Because we're talking uh, slash well, with ketchup. Fun. I mean, you know, if you have it with ketchup, it's as dicey. As far as it's dicey. You can eat it, yes. <laughs> all right. We'll be delving into all of that and more in a few moments with Julie. Julie, stand on by because we'll be bringing you back into the conversation shortly. All right. We're going to kick things off with uh, Julie's cohort, a friend and accomplice with Julie. Randy Ramsey is executive director of the Southwest Alternate Media Project. She's also an HCC film faculty member and one of our Film Friday guests. Good to see you, Randy. Oh, it's always good to see you, Todd. You look gorgeous as always. Well, it's very you. impressive. Thank you. Your take on fake blood. Um, uh, any, I any buy it. There? 
you can get it for like a dollar ninety nine on Amazon. Why would you make it? Just well, buy I'm it. just thinking chocolate with red, you know, chocolate with red dye just sounds good, you know. I mean, no, it actually doesn't. Having lived through that horror in film school, no fake blood tastes good. <laughs> None Nothing of it tastes does. good. But I will say we did buy this past summer for our summer camp, Julie, did we get like we got like a couple of gallons of it because we just killed people. We did. We did. And, you know, had we gone with Todd's idea, we all could have yeah. had ice cream after the fact. That's true. That's true. I don't even know you why we nice do that. Social and a slasher movie. I so love that. We were just recently um, at a, at our swamp board meeting and our um, Alfred Cervantes, who is, of course, the Houston yeah. film commissioner, is our board president. And he said, I, I watched the young filmmaker boot camp film and I'm, I'm a little concerned that, you know, they killed everyone. And I said, <laughs> I, I hate to tell you that these 15 year olds wrote that script. And he said, why didn't you pick a happier one? And I'm like, no, no, this was the happiest one. Yeah, well, just to give you an awful disclosure, I'm going to go see Scream tonight. So, I mean, hey. the movies are still popular. Well, our good friend, Molly Vernon, who is a former adjunct at HCC, retired recently. She worked on Scream here in Houston. Well, they've got a new I, version. Yeah, that's out yeah, right no, now. No, she yeah. worked on the new version. Oh, they the shot new, the some of it okay. locally. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. There's this sort of myth that nobody shoots in Houston, but this past fall was probably the biggest filming season we've had in a long time. In That's fact, cool. we had two Netflix series, a Bravo series, several feature films, all shooting locally. So when I was working to crew up our pilot apprenticeship program, because we use key professional filmmakers and technicians to apprentice young filmmakers, I had a lot of trouble finding crew because everybody was working. Luckily, oh, the Mo Ammer show wrapped shortly before our project began. So we we got a lot of folks off of that. But Houston, and for that project, for Mo Ammer, we, Julie and I both had several friends working on it. It doubled, Houston doubled as not just several cities, but several countries. They found wow. a sand pit out near Rosenberg that doubled as the Middle East. Oh, wow. So you can shoot Look at that. Anything in Houston, I promise you, you can. Okay, we here's got, a title I want to hear about The Noble Gentleman. What is this all about? Because I know so, your apprentices are working behind that. So, The Noble Gentleman is a short film that was uh, written and directed by uh, a fellow HCC full time faculty member, Kate Phillips. Um, and she was kind enough to let Swamp put a whole bunch of students on her set um, and allow them to learn on a professional film set. And it it was beautiful. I mean, Julie, I, I'm biased. Julie was the DP. So, of course, it looked beautiful. And it was a great experience for them. Um, and it was a pilot of a new program we're doing. One of the things we want to make sure at Swamp is that every production that comes to town has enough professional crew so that we can host more films, that we can shoot more right. TV series. Um and, you know, it's just a great opportunity for the kids, some of whom were from HCC, some of whom were from College of the Mainland. Um, one or two were not affiliated with any college. They were just young filmmakers looking for an opportunity. So we're super excited about that. And, you know, it's a pretty cost effective training method, especially right. if you get a terrific filmmaker like Kate, who will let us invade their set with the little people. You know, one thing that's exciting... You know, we are known in Houston as an international diverse city. Uh, yeah. You've got something exciting happening this weekend at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, the Iranian Film Festival. Tell us a yeah. bit about that and what we can expect. Well, MFAH has always been a program partner with Swamp, so we cross promote. But I, having lived in the Middle East for five years, I'm super excited about the Iranian Film Festival. Um, there's great art and incredible talent um, coming out of the Middle East that remains unrecognized or underrecognized. And if anything, this festival this year is, I think the theme is banned films because many of the films that are going to show starting this weekend at MFAH and running through February 1st were banned in Iran. So yeah. there's terrific features and short films. And I suggest, and a lot of them go back 
are period pieces that go back to the time before the Ayatollah in the 70s, where yeah. Iran was a really great secular education educational center. And a, it's a beautiful country. If you haven't seen it, it's gorgeous. So that is kicking off at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston this weekend. Yes. If you're interested, we'll put a link in our social media post where people can get tickets for that. And um, MFAH has a fantastic new screening theater. Yeah. So they I've are doing terrific, terrific stuff. Todd, you should have Marion Luntz on. She's great. We did. We've had her on. In fact, I saw her. Um, I went to go see uh, Swan Song. Uh, yeah. Theater. They hadn't opened up the new theater yet at that time, but I, I went to go see that, saw her then. But yeah, it's about time to get her back on again because I, as you mentioned, they have their new theater open. And she well, in that. she is a former board member of Swamp. I feel like everyone in town eventually makes it through. Swamp. A, yeah, everybody does their time. I um, think that that's all your fault. Randy. It's all, that that was before my time, but yeah, we've got a new board member on in just a moment. Yeah, yeah um, let's see. You have some workshops coming up. Yeah, we have a location sound workshop with Doug Robertson, who's been, I mean, he's been working in the industry for 30 years, Julie, 32. That's that's correct. And a winner of two Emmys. Yeah, so, yeah. Emmy award winning sound engineer. So we, he's going to teach location sound. Um, 101, so we can, one of my big pet peeves in independent films is that the sound is universally terrible. Um, and it makes me a crazy because as a writer, you know, you can't understand the dialogue if the sound is just horrendous. Yeah, so, most of them wind up on Netflix for some reason. I can't get the sound yeah. on Netflix right, it, no matter what I use. You know, I, I, yeah. I tell my students in cinematography all the time, right? If there's no audio, it's just beautiful surveillance yeah. video. Beautiful yeah, surveillance there. video. It, you know what? Some some films feel like beautiful surveillance video lately. It's true. That's it's true. just in general. Um, um, there's a yeah, film here so called... Doug, no, go ahead. I was going to say we have Doug Robertson coming up in February. We have Chris Soth, uh screenwriting coming up in April. We've got a ton coming up. And our summer. we're already gearing up for our summer camp this summer for teens. So we're excited. Um, HBO series Euphoria, uh, shooting on Extra Chrome. What is that yeah. and what's that all about? So Extra Chrome is a really rare, somewhat toxic film, but it makes everything extra intense, extra colorful. And since there's a lot of drug references in this, I, look, this is not for the under 17 crowd. You know what I mean? Okay. But so my thing as a screenwriter, and one of the things that I talk about to my, my students all the time is it doesn't matter how great it looks if no one cares. Yeah. So Euphoria is one of those more controversial kind of projects right now because everybody goes, God, it looks beautiful. And I go, but what about the story? And they go, oh, the story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We were just kind oh, yeah. on the look. So. But I'll tell you, they just had an episode recently that dealt with toxic positivity, which was pretty hilarious. So there was a, there were great moments in there. But if you get a chance, look at it because it's really quite different to anything else that you're going to see out there. Okay, I want to bring Dr. Tony in. I'm going to turn things over to her. Randy, stick around because we want to bring Julie in the in the conversation. Tony, take it over. But um, Julie, once again, congratulations on your new position with Swamp. It's always it's always fun to serve the community. One of the things that we talked about uh, when we did our introductions with each other was <clears throat> Alfred Cervantes asked us, you know, what was our connection to Swamp? And I was able to regale a tale of when I first moved to Houston, there was a filmmaker that I worked with who was attached to Swamp and had done several films for something called The Territories. And here in Houston, the Channel 8 station, the PBS station, is associated with the University of Houston. And so Swamp had a direct relationship with PBS, and the territories used to air on PBS uh, every month. And so they would pick certain filmmakers to feature their, their pieces with. Later on, when I got involved with Swamp and involved with Mary Lampy, who has since retired from the board and had been there for, Randy, what was it, like 35 years? Uh, she's now on our advisory board. We don't let anybody go that easily. <laughs> 
Okay, that frightens me a lot, but I'm just going to put a pin in that. <laughs> We're a little bit like the mafia. There's only one way. It's nice. in, never out. Nice. Okay. All right. Lovely. Um, hmm. We'll discuss that later. Um, I'll be bringing I know where you live. by your house mm -hmm. later on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mattresses, baby. Anyway, uh, Mary Lampy was involved with a groundbreaking concept called media literacy here in Houston, where we went around and we worked with different high schools and we educated students about how much it costs to produce 30 second spots and how large the crews are. And I worked on the media literacy program with Mary for about three years. So I got to travel around to a lot of high schools. And that was my first encounter with Swamp. I really enjoyed that. And it's been an invaluable resource for independent filmmakers. Today, in a lot of cases, Swamp works with filmmakers to assist them in getting funding so that they can complete their projects. And that is a huge win for Houston and a huge win for the creative medium, the youngest art form that we have in the world, which is cinema. You know, uh, speaking of that, I'm thinking Houston Media Source is also a good place for the young ones to uh, spread their wings and, and learn uh, a lot. And and I understand that you work a lot with them also. Yes, ma'am. I uh, was actually introduced to Houston Media Source again a long time ago. I had a young man that was a contractor that worked for me as a lighting contractor. He later took on a full-time job at Houston Media Source. And at the time, I really didn't spend a great deal of time going through their facilities and learning more about the program until, once again, my good friend and apparently mob member, Randy Ramsey, uh, roped me into going over there and teaching some seminars for Swamp. And I was blown away at the resources that are available to the general public uh, via funding that they get from all of us as taxpayers in the city of Houston. And you get the opportunity to not only utilize their equipment, but also get your voice heard. And they will train anyone to create programs and to utilize their voice. And they have an invaluable set of resources, lighting, cameras, audio. They have a live television studio. They have a live truck that they can yeah. take out onto location. And they also have access to a camera that is a fantastic piece of artistry. The Sony Venice has recently been upgraded uh, as far as Sony is concerned. They made the Venice 2, but the Venice 1 is available at HMS, and it ha they actually have two camera bodies. And that camera is not an inexpensive camera system. I want to be very clear about that. It is a very high-end, expensive camera system. In fact, a television show that I'm sure some of you have seen on Netflix, Bridgerton, was shot on the Venice. And one of the reasons the director of photography chose it was because it has this functionality that we call dual ISO, which means it can shoot both in high light situations as well as low light situations and not increase its noise bed. And that makes it a super useful camera. So folks that are working in environments that they want to work in mostly night shooting, they have the flexibility with this camera to do that. Julie, I think every woman with a pulse has seen Bridgerton. <laughs> I would I would think that most women with a pulse had seen Bridgerton. I'm uh, just saying. I, I Yeah, no, I totally get that. As a matter of fact, the DP on that show did some very exciting stuff. He actually went back old school, Barry Lyndon, and he actually used some candles to enhance the candlelight scenes where you're going through up the alley with all of the, you know, as they're coming into the house and you yeah. have all these, yeah, it, they did some things that were just phenomenal. And I used a lot of his information to do some testing before I worked on Kate's piece. Okay, Which, I got to weigh in here. I yep, I tried on. watching Bridgerton, couldn't oh, make come it on, the first episode. I appreciate the photography. I appreciate the cinematography. Didn't work for me. Sorry. I, God, you were not the market audience for that particular so. piece of work. Yeah, no. It was no. not made for you. <laughs> that was not made for you. No. Oh, it, although it, there were a lot of pretty ladies in there too, but really it was about the Duke of Hastings. Yes, consider that for a that moment. That is the yes. prettiest man I've ever seen. He is it's a ridiculous. Very, he has gorgeous skin. That's all I have to say about that. You know, you know how there are people in life. 
stuff that we want, like yeah. the gorgeous skin, the long well, eyelashes. And Todd has great hair. That. Like, why? Todd has <laughs> great hair. Okay, I'm and so I, bitter about Todd's hair being better than mine. I, he has perfect hair. What I, is I that? <laughs> Every <laughs> single time we're on, it's perfect. It, it's it is. super annoying. It is. And I we just saw. We so hard at it, and it's natural for them. <laughs> I Plus, just, I just cut it all off a few years ago, so it's just easy to deal with nowadays. I'm just saying, like, you probably took a shower and, like, brushed your hair and you were ready to go. I put on under-eye concealer that apparently made my under-eye bags bigger. <laughs> so I don't know what it's concealing. Well, you have to make sure it's, it, it's got to be, it has to blend. Yeah. Blend. It's, I, apparently, blend. I don't blend. Yes. Yes. I'm from New Jersey yes. and I live in Texas. I'm never going to blend. Well, <laughs> there's that. Okay. Carpet bagger. Anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing, uh, there's a youth summer camp, right? That, yes, ma'am. Uh, our young, we call it our young filmmaker boot camp. Mm -hmm. And we are super excited this year because we're going to be having that at HCC this year. Mm -hmm. We're going to be on the, uh, the A-Leaf campus and the film program, and we're going to be integrating some of the HCC students into it, both uh, Julie's cinematography class and the production uh, classes TV as field well. Mm -hmm. TV field production. So we're super excited and it's a great, we just got that news this morning. So I'm really excited. And, you know, Swamp, we like to move around the whole city. So last year, the camp was all the way in town. I feel like the location of that campus on Hayes Road will be great for the kids who couldn't come last year. So I'm really excited. Yeah, I mean, well, they've got so many toys out there at that campus. Yeah. They have some incredible stuff. I was we saying, do you know, have a be... pretty good selection of toys, oh, yeah. Donna. Okay. Oh, yeah. like that. You I know always what, wanted Todd? to make it like our, our satellite studios over there because <laughs> everything uh, we have. You know, Todd, you should come over. We have a lot of fun. But I will say this. Someone ordered 50-pound sandbags for that campus to put on the gear. And I would like to find that person and hit them with one. Because I, I don't those, know. Yeah, what who the, was that? How Listen, did you I don't know. Remember, that's so heavy. So <laughs> I know. Here, wait, I would like ladies. the C stand to stay still, but if I need that much weight on it, I'll just lay on top of it. It'll yeah, be exactly. I mean, I'll just put a dead body on it. I uh, it uh, it's yeah. It was uh, interesting because when no Kate problem. Phillips <laughs> chose her location, right? Um, so she had chosen a location that is a park that's here in Houston, right? So beautiful, lake, by the way, and easy lake. to shoot at. Lake Houston Wilderness Park, and they were more than accommodating to assist us in whatever way that we needed. And so she picked a spot that's along an area called Peach Creek, uh, and it has a sandy beach. So I want you to imagine, to add insult to injury, we're taking 50 <laughs> pounds of sand onto <laughs> sand. sand. <laughs> yeah. So you were the person that brought sand to the beach? Yes, yes sir. I am totally because responsible for that, that because I have a... I have a that philosophy. is how independent <laughs> filmmaking rolls. And normally, you know, people would say, oh, there's PAs for that. But they're not PAs. They're yeah. apprentices. So yeah, well, everybody had to haul sandbags. I don't know about y'all, but, you know, I got a tiny bit of mileage. And let me just say, those 50-pound sandbags hauling those babies into the sand when I was 20, <laughs> that was a little easier yeah. than it is now. Uh, I'm, Phillips thinking, would, go I, ahead. I'm thinking that uh, my, you know, pocket knife and some duct tape maybe make giving them a little weight loss program. Well, yeah, here's the funny part. So our equipment manager, when we were in a faculty meeting, and she was just laughing in the background, hearing the story of the 50-pound sandbags. And she said to me, she said, oh, but Julie, I've got all these 25-pound sandbags that don't have any sand in them. And I said, oh, baby, we're going to just cut those 50-pound sandbags and yeah. just divide the sand into there those 25. Go. I want or those 50-pounders gone. I, do you think I know these things? Like Todd said, we have plenty of toys. It's just some toys are hidden away in Santa's closet and nobody tells me. Hidden by that's, sandbags. That's exactly Misty, right. Misty is our favorite elf. By the way, I want to give a huge shout out to the dean and to our chair. So, Dean Riley, Michael Cohen, yeah. thank you so much for getting yes. our workshop into the A. Leaf Hayes campus. I think it's going to be a huge win for the school, for the students. Uh, we're going to have the opportunity to shoot there. It's nice, a safe environment if Randy decides that we want to build flats. We're going to build flats. We're building a set. Baby. Excellent, we built baby. a 19 positive. Think positive. 
<laughs> yes, no, absolutely. we built a 1950s kitchen in a conference room last summer with full on a 600 pound cast iron stove. So let me just say, we're building a set. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Randy doesn't hear the word no. Yeah, if folks are interested <laughs> in the uh, camp, we'll put some links in our social media posts where they can get a hold of you, learn about our film program and Swamp as well. Ladies, we appreciate you being on the show. Thank you for joining us for Film Friday. Uh, continued success with Swamp, and thank you for all you do for, for our students. Happy to do it. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Todd. Always happy to see you guys. Absolutely. Holler at us anytime. <laughs> anytime. Right. We don't Thanks, have any. We, we got to get the film department together. <laughs> All right. Have a good weekend, everybody. You too. All right, Tony, we got a few news and announcements, and we didn't get to cover the blood situation. So maybe we'll save that for next time. Oh, yeah. Sorry we about that. Cover that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want us to make people bleed? I mean, yeah, I mean, Dr. We Rayo, can out. we make students bleed and then just like, could we do that? Could you well, it, as long as it's oh, no. fake blood, yeah, yeah, we'll keep the fake blood now. All right, we got we got a few announcements we want to go over. I want to skip on down to our convocation because we got to let people know about that. HCC is having its spring convocation. We delayed it a bit. Uh, it's expected to be in person, but it will be live streams. Keep that in mind. They are asking you to register for the event. The morning session is 10 a.m. Friday, February the 18th. Friday, February the 18th. That's right. And there's an afternoon session at 2 p.m. Friday, February the 18th as well. So you get a 2 p.m. Uh, an afternoon session. They are going to be limited seating for social distancing and, and, and safety protocols. Keep that in mind. And we will be live streaming each live event. So make sure you sign up. It's going to happen at HCC Central Campus, whether you attend in person or online, you're welcome to do so and we encourage you to do so. Check your emails or to register or go to hccs.edu and search convocation. Okay, um, let's skip on down to registration, Tony, because that's important for people who are looking to get a jump start. Second start semester is about to get underway in a couple of weeks. Yes, and now is the time to register. Uh, we still got the online anytime, online on a schedule, hybrid in person and hybrid lab. So we still are doing all those different things. But remember, the classes are small because of the COVID thing. So like my stage makeup class has only got six people. Wow. Normally, yeah. we, we hold about 13, maybe 15 at the most, but we've got it down to only six and there's more that want to register, but we can't get them in because it's, you know, COVID-19, six feet apart yeah. type of thing. So, so um, if you want to register, you got to do it early. Is That's the main thing. And you can still get into second start. That's not a problem. There's funding available to pay for your college. You have to be an HCC student to get emergency funding. We've got financial aid, scholarships, all of that's available. Just go to hccs.edu slash now and register today. Okay, we got a special guest coming up on Monday, Tony. Yes, we have the uh, librarian Melba Martin, and uh, she's been with us for 32 years. That's just an amazing uh, amount of time, and we're going to talk to her about her years here. She's getting ready to retire. That's right. Congratulations to her. You'll hear from her also next week, Tasty Tuesday. I'm going to give you a preview. Sushi. Get that in mind. Love me some sushi. All right. We're going to be uh, taking the weekend off, of course, but we'll be back live here Monday morning at 10 a.m. for Up to the Minute.